welcome everybody to the special event with the book map real excited to have you here thank thank you bruce for inviting me my name is pro trader mike founder of mojo day trading it's gonna be a great hour of trading i i can tell you that yeah let me let me uh, give you a quick introduction mike and read the disclaimer and then uh, let you let you uh, uh take it from there uh, so uh, we've done a, a special event already with Mike, so inter that was the kind of inaugural uh, introduction uh, and kind of interview who Mike is, and, and uh, so now you guys know. Uh, and uh, uh, anyway, uh, just to recap here, uh, founder and CEO of Mojo Day Trading, uh, Pro Mike has been a trader, uh, has traded the markets for 30 years, has educated thousands of traders from around the globe, founded Mojo Day Trading uh, with the simple idea of sharing his knowledge and passion for the stock market. Uh, and with inspiring investors. Uh, I've got his um, website and his Twitter here. I'll be putting that into the chat so you guys don't have to copy these down. Uh, and I need to read through the disclosures and then Mike, uh, you can uh, take it away here. Um, general disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. Live trading is in simulation, demo, paper trading mode and strictly for educational purposes. Live trading executed in simulation cannot accurately represent realistic trading performance. Risk disclosure. Trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. An investor could potentially lose all or more than the initial investment. Risk cap capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security nor lifestyle. Only risk capital should be used for trading, and only those with sufficient risk capital should consider trading. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Uh, and then with that said, let me uh, turn this over to Mike. And I've got you up and streaming, Mike. So uh, have Thanks, at it. Is. Thanks, Bruce. Great intro. Book map, super fantastic. Love and f very thankful I'm a part of this technology. Some of the things you're going to see me do and speak about is my trading routine and what I've been doing for 30 years. If I can help you out with some golden nuggets of information and what I see and what I do, that would be excellent to pay forward so the first thing is this towel this is my sweat towel it's an ogo golf towel it's pretty big it's when the book map starts to cook and you're trading your hands sweat mine do so this you know rather than getting sweat all over the keyboard i use this and you could see my screen right now i went through a a trade with a signal back here i'm going to move the screen back a little bit right here and uh, this is just a perfect little view right here of the book map and how I use it. I'm watching the NASDAQ futures right now. And it had come up from around right here. You could see my circle. And it came down into this little like U. Try to get here, but you had this red line right here. You could see it. That's real support. There's a lot of buyers on there bounced right off of that so my target is actually like you could see this not this line this would be like adding through here but i saw it through here the top of these candles right here this one and then this one what i do is i overlay my candle sticks over the dots because when you have a big volume dot you'll see it through the candle uh, as it broke out right here so you had little dot little dot little dot little dot got a huge dot and this bar right here a circle this bar was the breakout bar right here and it went right through added up into this trade and let it ride about right here took a quarter of the profit on my trade right here I was about half and right here probably out of all of it and then it went higher and I'm like oh wow look it's going higher which they usually do you're not gonna hit the top of the bottom but as long as you're green on the trade that was an amazing trade that worked right there on the book map and what I do is my key figure was this 11,900 when it was down here at 11,870, I said, you know, if it breaks out and goes above, it's going to sequence up into what I call the even number par. 
And right here, it's like a magnet. You could see the biggest bars <clears throat> on any chart. And I'll show you the future coordination, the futures coordinated with this. Just erase this. The biggest bars on this chart are right here and right here. And it's very consistent to that pattern. So when it sets up right under the number and it could break up, this is a trade you want to add up into the number and watch it break out above. And if you do one or two of those during the day, that's, that's all you need, really. Here's another one right here. It's earlier in the day. And you had the same scenario. We move back in time a little bit. So it did it right here again for another trade. So right here you have a, a line, a ceiling that's going across. It hit goes up and it hits it, hits its head against that, hits its head against that. So you'd want to see when it goes through, and this is the bar that did that. So if you got in on that, that's what I look for. Again, headed up into an even number, which is 12,000. That's where this went up into. And that's what I trade up 11,900. So the books map is showing me where the support And here's another setup. So if you're watching this and it dips down, look at the ceiling right here. So this could be a breakout move. And the next bar is red, so we'll see if it's a false breakout. It's still doing the same. So maybe if you added one or you got stopped out and rebought, you still got back in the trade. Because what I do is, let me show you how I trade. So let's say you're in this box and you want to move higher and you're in one lot. Okay. If it goes higher, guys, you're a hero. Congratulations. You picked it, went up. Every, anyone can do that. Anyone can do that. But what if it goes down? I like to add up one more into it. So I have two lots going up into the move higher. Take a note here. When I do my first lot on the futures, I'm doing the second lot as this stock SQQ moves five cents higher. Okay? As this stock moves five cents in either direction, I'm going to be either adding to my long or adding to my short on my futures trade. So I watch that stock. I have book map up. This is the level two on SQQ, which is the inverse of the NASDAQ. Write this down. As SQQ rises in price, the NASDAQ will go lower. If SQQ drops in price, the NASDAQ will go higher. So if you're able to foresee in that level two, according to the movement of the price, where it's going to and going from, and play it, you could see the moves minutes to seconds before they happen. And that's what I use with Bookmap. I look at what the price is, I confirm where the size is, and I make the play. So I'm not always right, but here's how it works. So I'm in this little zone right here, and I take one lot. Just one. If I'm right, I'm going to add up five cents in the right direction. I'm going to be in two, and I'm going to ride out that trend. Anyone can do that. Now, scenario two of the trade. It goes down like it did right here. So I'm taking number two on the dip, and I'm not doing it a nickel away from the first price. I'm going to wait for 10 cents. I'm going to wait for a bigger move, patience, because I'm wrong. 
So when I'm wrong and it goes the wrong way, I make a deal with the trading gods. I say, look, allow me to take one more lot. I'm in the wrong direction, but if you let me take it and it goes back to break even, I won't lose on the trade. I'm already in it. I'll risk that. So I make that deal. If it goes lower after this right here, any lower, I'm out. I'm stopped out. I only have two. And I just redo the trade. I count to 10. I see where it is. And I just reprice it. I was stopped out. I'm wrong. I redo the trade. No harm, no foul. Out of 10 of these trades, I look to be right eight times. So if I'm wrong twice on these little ones, it makes no big deal. Now, this rises back up like it did. Right in here, I'm going to break even on one of the lots. I made that deal. Look, it went higher on the other lot. So I, could, I, even, I, I turned a loss into a win. So there's three scenarios going to happen. You're going to buy, add, it's going to go higher. You're going to buy, add, lower, and it's going to go higher. You're going to break even on one and maximize the other. Or it's going to do one, go lower for number two, and then go lower again. You're stopped out. Those are the three things that you need to have in your left, right, uppercut in order to trade correctly. You can't just sit there and jab with a right hand. You got to have the combination. You got to know what to do in all the scenarios. And these kind of programs with book map just solidify exactly what I'm looking at. And what I see with my eyes and I act accordingly. I use the numbers. This thing went through 11,900. It's 11,913. You're still in it. It's going, it's 916. There's size right up here. I'll show you how to read this. So now if I have to make a decision right here on which way this is going to go from here, I look at the sizes. There's a 10, an 8, a 12, a 15, a 16. There's only a 46 right here. He's, he's, he's some decent size. And let's see what's below. A 24. There's really nothing of any kind of size below. So it's weak to come back down here. These numbers just show me how many people transacted at that price, how many trades were at each one of those prices. So there's a majority of the trades right in here in the 1,000 and the 1,400. A lot of the trading went off in here in this zone. So that's how I'm able to look and start building patterns for myself with book map on what I see and what numbers it's going to do. Now, let me tell you something very, very important. I don't trade the charts. I trade the price on where it's at. Example, at 11,900, I was long to go through 900 to the upside. If it goes past 11,907, I wait till 11. If it touches 11,911, it touches through 14, 1411. It touches through 100, $100.11. And it goes through that past 10, it'll go to the 20. Just from experience and journaling. So I'll hold on like it's doing right now to 11,920. And I'll scale out and take a little bit of profit right there and set my trail stop for like 12. So if it reverses back, I've made a nice trade. If it keeps on going higher, I keep on pushing the trail stop up. And what I do is I write in my journal what happened at the zero, zero? What happened at 11,905? when it went through. If it's coming down from 10 to 5, I'll journal in my journal. What happens when it's coming down from 20 to 10 to 5? Where does it wind up and stop? And just recording patterns in my journal. So I know across the whole dollar ladder, what's going to happen at 48 cents, at $48, at 11,948. It's going to go through 50 and rocket up higher. That I know, and I wait for that. 
at 11,998, it's going to go through 12. And I wait for the even number trades. And you could see them in the chart. They're usually the biggest bars in the chart are the biggest number trades. And it's a very successful system that I've used to be more accurate on my trading. Here's the trade right here through 11.9. So if you go back on any stock or any futures, here's the biggest bar and the biggest bar, it's through 11.9. There's another one of these at 11.8. There's another two at 11.7. There's another two at 11.6. There'll be another two, I believe, at 12,012, 12, 12.1. 1, 12, 2, 12, 3. And if you want to play the little 50 marks in between, those work pretty well also. The reason why I do that, Bruce and everybody else, listen carefully, because the longer I studied charts, the more I convinced myself with my technicals that it's going in that direction that I spent. And the longer I spent the time looking at the chart or going to a forum and asking someone else about the chart, the more I was stuck in it if it went in the wrong direction because it's hard for us traders to accept we're wrong. And when you study a chart, the longer you look at it, the more you convince yourself you're right. It's just another trade. You trade for tomorrow and you don't ruin yourself on a trade that you think you're an analyst on. I don't like to be wrong. I don't like to be um, uh, bullish. I don't like to be bearish. I just like to be right. So I'm not going to tell you at 11, wherever it is now, I probably gamble at 11,915 telling you where it's going to go. But at 11,998 or 11,898, I could pretty much push my chips in and say, hey, I'm riding it through the even number. And it'll pretty much do that a very high percentage of the time. And that's how I trade. I sit, I wait for my setup. I make my trade aggressively like I have pocket aces in poker. Okay. And I push my chips in when I do. And I'm convinced with positive expectancy that, hey, that bar is going to go through that even number. And it started just underneath it. So we can look at some stocks like... They do the same thing. Let's go to my DX feed. And let's look up the, the Apple. Okay. And look what happened to Apple. So you're going to see the biggest bars on this chart are through the even numbers. So let's go down here to the first one a little bit back ago. So here's Apple. And here's 156 right here. Here's 157, right? Hasn't gone to 157. How about the 50 number? Here's the 50. So the biggest bars are through the mini 50 number on the whole entire thing. And the biggest bar here is approaching it. That's just how, if there was a up here at 157, look at the size. 14,000, there's like a huge, huge, see this bar coming across? There's a huge amount of shares here. If it approached 156.96 and there was a green, it would go right through. No matter how much you think it's up, that's the number. They're sitting there for liquidity. Let me tell you how the markets work. A lot of big firms, when you have a lot of shares, they do what's called rebate trading. You either add liquidity or remove liquidity from the stock market. When you are a large institution transacting large amounts of shares of Apple and you're sitting on the ask with 144,000 shares, if you wanted to sell those shares and do a market order at the bid, the exchange would charge you money. It would cost you money to do that. There would be a big old... You do that all day long, there's a lot of fees. It's called removing liquidity from the market. You're selling it right on the bid as a market order. However, if you sit up on the ask and you sell your position on the ask as a limit order, 
you're adding liquidity to the market. The exchange actually pays you for that. So when you see large amounts of shares higher or lower, the market makers are sitting there to get their rebates. And the, they're going to move the market to those numbers. When I first started trading 30 years ago, they would call each other on the phone and say, I have 144,000 shares to sell at 157. Do you have a buyer? They're like, sure, I do. Let me give me 15 minutes. I'll put the oil. And then it's like trans. Now there's no phones. It's like computerized. So they sit there with a certain number. They could make the number anything they want. And the market makers know what the numbers mean. So that 144, 431 or 401 would be significant. There's a 411 in there. That means news may be pending. We need to get in. Or if that number was at 1,000, 19912, there's a 911 in there. Emergency, I really need the stock and it's going to go higher. So with what they're putting in, in that DOM on the right, with the nut, that's where they're talking to each other. I have found in my experience, the market's moved to. It's a completely different game. Guys, if reading charts worked, I'd sit there and read charts and put in Fibonacci's and technicals all day. And, but nine out of 10 traders lose and nine out of 10 people teach charts. So I'm using the book map where I could see inside the engine of what's calibrating, where the size is, where it may move to, what the price is. And I'm making my move accordingly. And I've been very successful doing that. So if there's any questions that you may have from any of the notes, or you want me to repeat anything or look at any stocks, I would be surely glad to do that. And hopefully they're all at what I call that even number trade. What do you think? Yeah, no, no questions at this time, Mike. Yeah, cool. So now you know how I trade and what I do. That'd be, if anybody has any questions, I'd be surely looking to take them on. Otherwise, you know, we could just... Uh, take a look at the nasdaq and see where i be trading it's 34 now went through 11.9 got that huge red line of support down here look at that Whew. what's this thing at 48.99 came right down from 50 bucks it was at 50 when i starting this uh, presentation now it's 40 and i fell a whole dollar market came back from down 500 to down 300. It's amazing. Yesterday, we're down 500. Yesterday, we're up 500. Today, we're down 500. Unbelievable. The movements in the market and what you can do. And the futures are great, too. So, yeah, this these platforms nowadays, you know, whatever it's worth, it's, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. If you win at the poker table, okay, and you put your chips in and they give you $200 back, aren't you going to tip the dealer? Get a massage, a drink. Of course you are. That's the rate for the book map. The money that I'm able to and the value that I get off the book map each month, my team, myself, dude, here you go, whatever that's worth. If you're not using it to make you money, then, dude, don't be in there. If you're not going to winning at the table, you're not going to be tipping the dealer. But if you're winning with it, you should be uh, using it. Absolutely. You don't pay any commissions anymore. Ameritrade, E-Trade, all these companies used to pay, what, $4.99 a trade in and out. Then it got reduced and then they made it free. You used to spend hundreds of dollars a day in commissions just to trade. Now you can use a program like this for $100 a month and assist your trading to uh, be really spot on, man. I see which direction it's going now. It's trending higher. I would not short this thing right here. I would not short it. I'd short it under this line right here for a breakdown, but I really wouldn't short it where it's going. Look. It could fill in the bottom of this triangle right down here to seven and move all the way down. But it's a break under this to add number two 
And this for number one. Otherwise, it's going to go higher into 50. So it's kind of like a in-between. It's a no trade zone. It's either going to go up to 40 or go down on the 30. The 30s and the 60s, you don't look to do anything in. In the 60s, it's going to go down to 50 or up to 70. Why should you buy or sell in 60? In the 30s, it's going to go to 40 or down under. Uh, in, the tw- in the 30s, it's going to go to 40 and shoot through 50, or it's going to go down in the 20s and head to the other even number. It's like the, the in-between balancing point. The 30s and the 60s. In the 90s, there's a 90% chance it's going to go through the even number when it's going higher. At 95 cents or $95 or $11,995, there's a 95% chance it's going to continue the next big green up and you could see all the numbers and indicators. At 99, there's a 99% chance it's going to go through from journaling. On the way down, those numbers apply reverse side. On the way down at 11,900, at 05, there's a 95% chance it's going to reverse through the number. Yeah, I, Mike, I just need yeah. to jump in and, and, yeah, and, jump and in tell and everybody that uh, uh, numbers like this and percentages yeah. are based on uh, uh, some of Mike's uh, results. And, uh, you know, past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Okay. These are not trading recommendations. This is all for educational purposes only. So, uh, uh, you know, that's what we're here for is to learn uh, from Mike and the way that he trades. Uh, but uh, percentages are, are not uh, something to... Uh, uh, I use it as a gauge. So I know the odds are in my favor when it's at 90 going through the upside and it's at 05 going through the downside. I've got that risk reward of like way in my favor. That's how I've been journaling it. So yeah, the numbers of 90% this and that, that's just how I visualize it in my mind. Yeah, absolutely. Past, past performance is not necessarily yeah. indicative of future results. Just need to say that. Yes, sir. So we got a nice red bar down on the NAS. He went down under here. We're breaking down. So this thing right here rose up through 49. So as this thing went higher through the even number, see it? The NASDAQ is going lower. Now it's about 49, 15 to 20. Look, 20. Told you. I know where this stock is according to where these bars move. And here's the NASDAQ right here. So you can see the NASDAQ going lower too. See it? The red? That's because it went through $49. So went through $49. It's making the red bars lower. So if you went in on the futures and shorted the NASDAQ right under Heinz $49, it's $49.30 right now. Forty-nine thirty-two right now. That's how it works. That's how she works, guy, my friends. So when SQQ be rising, Nasdaq be dropping. When SQQ be dropping, the Nasdaq be rising. So if you have an idea of which way it's going to go, that's how I play my futures. But um, you, you're, from your experience, uh, Mike, uh, the the um, and the SQQ uh, Qs are um, kind of leading indicator. Yes, it's a three. It's an ultra short ETF of the exchange. So it moves like penny for penny. If this moves up a penny, the Nasdaq will move down a couple of ticks. If it moves down a penny, the Nasdaq will move up a you know same thing. If it moves up, Nasdaq moves down. If this goes down a penny, Nasdaq moves up five ticks it's very in sync with it so like i said if i can anticipate a move through 50 or 49 and get in right underneath and it goes through on the upside it's going to make that huge red bar down and that's that's what that that's my safe play that i i wait for in the markets 
Yeah, it's interesting. How did you come across that that correlation? Just um... just because I've traded SQQ stock for twelve years, along with UVXY, I got good at trading the overall market direction, and I would trade a thousand. Let's say it's at forty nine right here. You know, it was just forty nine twenty. I would never short. I always go long. I was a long trader. And back in the old, I didn't even know about trading through par then or anything like that. I would buy a thousand shares and look for 15 cents or 20 cents to make $150 with the commissions. And that's how I made, you know, $100 on the trade. So it would have to move 20 cents. And I got great at looking at go up 10 and down three and up 15 and down eight and never hitting my target, but watching it for hours watching the paint dry as they say you know i've watched a lot of paint dry so i got familiar with how it moves and then my uh, the prop trading firms came out with trading the futures and just one day i was trading sqq and had the chart up for the nq and when i made a trade in sqq long it made a red bar down on the nasdaq and i'm like oh my gosh if I did one lot of the NASDAQ and SQQ moves five cents, I've made $200 or $150, the same amount of money I would make waiting for 20 cents. I said, I have found the golden goose. This is incredible. I could make a nickel or a dime on SQQ all day long. That's my, and if I'm wrong, I just cut it. I'm, I'm wrong a dime, I'm cut it because I like to be right eight out of 10 times. And if I make $100 eight times and I lose $100 twice, I'm up 600 for the day. And that's how I've been able to trade on a very long win streak with that formula. And this is my system. So right now at 48.98, if this thing goes through 49, it's going to make another red bar down on the NASI. Here it goes, 98, 99, boom, through 49. That's how it works. There it is. See how it touched 49? And it's making the red bar. So that's, I, I watched it, and that's what I figured out. And that's my course. I teach people that. So I don't, look, I don't need to look at the chart or the bar because I'm just playing what the number is going to do to make that bar. So when the bar is going green, everyone's buying, I'm selling. And when the bar is red, everyone's selling on, I'm buying. It seems to be very successful. It's 49. And I like to scale in to like one or two or three lots on every trade. So like I said, if I'm in here for the move through 49, I'll get in at 95 and I'll add right on the even number and it's going through. Uh, if it go if I buy here and it goes down, I'll wait till 85. I'll add one more there and see if it bounces up. And if it does, I get out break even. And if not, I just get out. I'm wrong. But right at these even numbers, there's a two a word called positive expectancy. When I have pocket aces at the poker table, guys, you don't want to play against me. I'm probably gonna take your money. Because with positive expectancy, that's a, the strongest hand you can have in poker. I'm going to bet it aggressively and win, most probably, because it's based on what's called positive expectancy. And that's what the setup happens with the, what I call the roll through the even number. That's how we do it. That's how I do it. And anything else I feel is gambling. You know, at 75, I can't tell. It could go either way. But at 99, 98, I could tell you which way it's, I think it's going to go. And that's how I trade. Otherwise, I've found I've lost. I'm over trading. I'm, my small... Win streak doesn't outweigh the one big loser I added on to the position because I thought I was right because I looked at the chart. Yep. So, Mike, right that's, here. A, that's a really interesting uh, background. Um, you, so, I, I don't know if you have time to elaborate on that, but I'm just really kind of curious on 
uh, the, the your poker playing and then how maybe that really helped you with your trading uh, yes uh, my poker playing I was ranked 167th out of 1.7 million tracked players online I made a career of playing poker online as you know the government shut down online poker I switched then to uh, trading and started doing the same thing I was doing with poker, which was journaling. When I would enter a poker tournament, I was either a, I was a great tournament player and a cash game player, but the tournaments was my key. One time I won three back-to-back -back tournaments for $10,000 each. So I entered the tournament for 100, I won 10 grand, entered the next tournament for 100, won 10 grand, came in first and second on both of those and after that I knew I had a system that worked and what I would do is I would journal every hand that I would play and what the result is of that hand did I win did I overplay it how many people was I playing against <clears throat> uh, building up one of 14 hands that I ultimately would play if it was one of those hands I knew how much to play and how many people were against me just from journaling and seeing what the result was from playing it in the past. I would use all those results. And I built a system that was based on positive expectancy that when one of these 14 hands came up, I could be pretty aggressive because the odds were in my favor that I would win. So when I came to the day trading, I journaled for four months. A thousand shares of every trade. That's all I did. The first month I would make like a certain amount, a certain amount, a certain amount for three months, and I'd go to two thousand shares. A certain amount. Then I got up to like three thousand after many months. And then I studied all of the data and I saw in the data that all of the winning trades with the highest consistency were at ninety cents, right under the even number. And they would go through and they would be my largest wins. I was like, wow, I really have something here. So what I noticed was at 90 cents or $90, it moved slow. It really didn't move the way it moved once it went through the even number. It was like anticipation. I was like waiting for it. So I would like buy initially at 90. I'd add more at 95 and I'd add my final at 98 to go through the number. And I was like, okay, now that's the way that I'm doing it. That's the way that I'm going to teach it. And every time I did the trade, I would record it and I would win. I'd be like, this is a very high probability system based on positive expectancy that I developed from journaling and looking at what the best trades were at those prices and i figured it out and that's why people are in my chat room have been with me for 12 years on a subscription because all we do in the chat room is look for the biggest movers in the morning that are stocks going through an even number yesterday we traded apple for the first time i could even call out for option traders to do that to move up moved up like three or four points it started when it went through the high list at 98 it was 150, whatever it is, at 98 cents. I said, Apple's going to go through, I call it the Heinz trade play, like a bottle of ketchup. It moves slow in anticipation at 90, 95, 98. But once it busts through, boom, goes all over the place. It works in crypto. I bought Bitcoin, at, missed it at 480 the first time through 500. I bought Bitcoin. August of 2000 and many, many years ago, 980. Why? Because I knew it would go through 1,000 for the first time ever. At 9,999, go look what Bitcoin did. It went to 19,000. It touched 11, went right to 19 without stopping. Look at what Bitcoin did through 20,000. 21, 22, 23, 24. The biggest bars are all through those even 1,000 numbers. Yes, sir. Stocks, 
they do the same thing. The biggest bars I've noticed, go look back at all your stocks and what the biggest bars of the day are. They should all be through the even numbers or the 50 cent marks. All the other little are dojis. They're all not there. Go look at uh, anything that trades in price. It'll gravitate towards an even number. Ah, that's my system, bro. So, Mike, how long did it take you to, to um, you know, uh, uh, kind of build that edge? You said like four months or so. Is that right? About five, more than four months of journaling every single trade. I journaled about 130, 150 trades a month for five months. Something like that. I would do like 20, 20, you know, 20 trades a day, every day. Yeah, that's uh, that's and great. And I studied the data. Yeah, I studied all. I have all of it. I teach it in my day trading course. How I have, I went through all the data so you could see all the trades from all those months of the ones that worked and how I figured it out. My challenge to my students is show me a Heinz trade that doesn't work. It has to be green going up. Okay, it can't come from down the block, meaning at 4898, I think it's going through 49, but it can't come from here, 4860, and run 40 cents, and then it's too much. But if it starts here and it's basing at 4880, 90, yes, that's, that's my Heinz trade, and I'll play that through the even number. If you want to be safe, one push at 98 market order. If you want to be Tricky, entry number one at 90, entry number two at 95, and entry number three at 97 plus. Once it crosses 97, I have to usually do market orders because it prints so fast towards the uh, even number. And there's a huge, large amount of shares there because the guy's getting a selling rebate. And there's a lot of liquidity at the 50 cent marks and at the even number marks. The even numbers will move more than the 50 centers. And that's all I teach. It's all that I do. And when people come to me, they stick with me because I never deviate from that. That's all that I do. I have dozens of eyes looking at it each day. So we're all on the same page, whether it be the futures that we're trading or the stocks that we're trading. If you don't call an out a Heinz trade, we're probably not doing it. But if you're calling out, hey, you know, Twitter moving through, is it 41.84 right now? Not a Heinz trade. But at 41.98, I'll have an alert or let me know because I'm going to play it through 42. Meta, it's down. If it was up a dollar fifty, I would love that to play through the even numbers to go through to 150 and accordingly. If the stock is red, it's not a Heinz trade to go up higher. It's got to be green. It's got to be trading a lot of volume and it can't come from too far down the block, as I say. And uh, yeah, we got we to gotta trade through an even number. There's a book called Reminiscence of a Stock Operator, the story of Jesse Livermore. You've all heard of Jesse Livermore. In chapter seven of the audio book, if you want, contact me. I'll send you a copy of that. In chapter seven, minute number two, he talks about how he came back from busting and he needed to rebuild his stake. And he had one chance to do that. And he waited. It was on Bethlehem Steel, his favorite stock. He knew it was going to go through 100. At, at 70, he would have been taking the position, he said. At 80, he would have been rocking back, He adding. But he didn't have the luxury to do that because he borrowed a stake from a, another trader to give him one shot to build himself back up. So he couldn't risk anything. And he was sitting in the restaurant and watching the tape. And when Bethlehem Steel went to 95, he ran to the broker's office, put in 100 shares at 98. And when he looked up at the tape, this is the story of the book, it was trading at 100 already. It closed at 114. He bought another 100 shares at the close. The next morning, it opened up at 142. 
He pyramided his money and made his stake back. And it was all dedicated to trading through par. The 300s moved bigger than the 200s, and the 200s moved bigger than the 100s, according to Jesse Livermore. And my student showed me that about a year and a half ago when I've been using it already for 10 years. And I figured it out through poker, not through Jesse Livermore. But it's good to know that that guy used it too, guys. So that's what I do to win, man. Otherwise, I find it pretty difficult to win in the market. Because, hey, at 65 is a no-buy zone. It's either going to 70 or 50. What the hell are you going to do? It's a guess. Here, flip the coin. It, who knows where it said it went to 70. Great. You're right. You flip the coin. You, you shouldn't be happy that you called it higher. It could have gone 10 cents lower. You had no idea. The chart's not telling you anything. It's what happens there. Okay, it fell 30 cents. It's at 60. How many times is it going to pop up versus pop down? That's what I look at. Mike, because that's how the computers work. Yes, sir. Can, can you show us another example maybe in the NASDAQ that uh, maybe earlier in the day that you saw? Yeah, let's. we could pull up any of the biggest stocks of the day. The NASDAQ gainer right here is SOBR. Let's pull up this one. So right here, the stock is going... Do you, uh, through, do you, do you two, have it in book map there? Yeah. To see oh, yeah, the, the order book would be good. Pull that up here. So let's go. What was that one? That was SOBR. Watch this thing load up. So this thing at $2 right down here, you could see. Look. So it pops up on your... on the. On here, here's your little base right here. So it's basing. Ba you, but look at two dollars is right here. The biggest size is two nine one eight. It's got the biggest number, and right through two, it's got the biggest bars. Boom, boom, boom. If it touches two eleven, it'll go right to two twenty. So you sold at two nineteen, two twenty nine, two thirty nine. At two forty four, you're flat. You're completely out of the trade. I don't care if it goes. What? You're flat. Guys, if you buy a stock at 198, 195, and it goes to full, I call it a full sequence, Bruce, to 244, you should have nothing left. Nine out of 10 times or eight out of 10 times, I have found it goes lower after that. Congratulations, you did great. But... If it goes higher, guess what? You'll rebuy at 48 to go through 50 because my experience is it's going to go through that mini 50. So what did you miss? You missed four cents, and then it goes through 50, and you're in a new trade. Same thing if it went from 50 and it went all the way up to 90. You'd be flat at 94. You'd rebuy at 98 to go through the next even number, you'd miss four cents. So in the whole $1 ladder, to be in the move from zero, zero to the next dollar, you'd only miss eight cents and be safe about it. That's what I have found from journaling and trading according to the number and not the chart. I know what it will do, in, in my opinion, at a certain number. So let's look at another one. Yeah, It'll be if, can, can you look at uh, maybe that um, uh, SOBR and, and uh, where you might have seen it earlier in the day and how you might have played it kind of uh, uh, in, in hindsight there. So as it's coming up toward the $2. Right here, it created a couple really nice buy uh, bubbles. Right here was the big ones. So it tried it right here but failed and came right back up. So in this scenario, if you had bought here at the top, you would have bought number two here. You would have broke even here on one of them and rode up the other one for the profit. Okay. So the range like around uh, 85 on up is, is, uh, is good for you, basically. 85 
is on the radar. Let me know when it gets to 95. I see. Yeah. yeah. That, then I'll start to move. Then my chips will come out on the table. Watch Mojo start start betting. And I'm in at 95. I'm adding it to. I'm selling half here at 205 to 210 every time. Half of the trade is you've done what you wanted. You traded it through the even number. You're not a cha, you're not a pig. You take the profit. You're like nailed it. And then you have half the position left. If it goes back down to the even number, you're out. But if it touches eleven, from my experience, it'll go right to twenty. Listen carefully. Eleven to 20 and 20 to 11 is the fastest dime in the whole dollar ladder no other 10 cent increment moves as fast as that one 70 to 80 60 to 50 nothing moves as fast as 10 to 20 and 20 to 10 how do i know that from journaling i'm telling you so if it touches 11, I'm holding. That thing's going to go. I'm selling a little at 19 right under the next one. I'm selling a little bit at 29, 39, and 44. I'm flat. I'll rebuy it at 48, 49 if it goes up higher for the next roll move. Otherwise, that's I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied. I made a good trade. Want to look at another one? Let's look at uh, V. What is this one? V, V-R-A-X. V-R-A-X, big winner today. And while that one loads up, we'll load up also this other big winner, which was NRBO. So this is what you see on all the gainers lists. You use this machine. So here's right here. Scroll back in time. So NRBO, perfect example. Let's go right here. So you have $20 is right here. See it? And look, it did nothing this whole time. You have support down here with the red bar, Bruce. This volume bar came in right here. So you caught the volume bar, bro, right here. You've been waiting for it, actually. At 1960 on your right, 1980, it's getting juicy juice. Get me a seat at the table, please. At 1990, I'm in. $20 at 1998, I'm adding. At 2011, I have half the position left. At 44, which is, look, this red line, look, 44, I'm flat. That was an amazing trade. If I'm in, back in at 48, which is right here. Now I'm selling 59, 69, 79, 89, 94. I'm flat. Odds are it's going to go lower. If it doesn't, I'm rebuying at 98. I buy at 2098. It comes up here to 21. It comes up to 2160. It comes up to 2180, all the way into almost 22 on the spike. That is an amazing Heinz trade. When did I do it? Only through 20. 1960, don't tell me about it. 1970, don't tell me about it. 1980, let me wave to me. At 1990, you better let me know. And I'm in. We can look at any other stocks, and they do all do the same thing. Let's look at VRAX. VRAC should do it through the 50 number or through the 3 number. Those are the only two numbers that I'd like to play on, on this VRAX. So you'll see the biggest bars of the day will be at those numbers. Here's VRAX. So here is 50 right here. Yeah, these two bars right here. So it moved up on this first move right here up into 50 from 30. So the first time it made its move up into 50, you did it. But it came 20, it came to, uh, 25 cents below that. It works real good with like Tesla. Let's look at like Tesla and those meta and those kind of stocks. 
it, it works really, really good with that because you can get some tremendous, tremendous runs. So it's at 308. So the reverse under 310 would be the play. Look, there's the 310 line. So it's knocking its head at 310. So you, on the way down, you would have gotten 310, 309, 308. Went all the way to 308.40 on the reverse hinds. So this was an easy one, too. Here's 309. How, how, how do you play the reverse hinds? So the reverse hinds is the same thing. Here it's knocking its head up here. You can see this big red line at 310. So if it hit its head, hit its head, hit its head, hit its head here, the risk higher is a one. So I'm not risking. If it does, if it goes up, I'm done. I, I made the wrong trade. But it hit its head so many times, the stock is red. It's not green. So I'm going to play as it gets closer to 309. I'm going to go for it to go under 309. It's called the reverse signs. And that's what this one did. Look. So right here at 309.10, there's the, like I said, a 90% chance, in my opinion, just from a gauge that I'm in favor that it's going to go under. At uh, 309.05, 95%. At 309.01, I'm in. It's going to go right under 309. And it flushed like a champ. Same thing on the way up. See? Stopped here. 98, 99, you caught it through, it went to 309.40. So you made a reverse, you made the other one back up, and you're a Heinz trading machine. You're trading it up, you're trading it down, and that's the way that we do it. And you just got to wait. Here's another big one. So right here, it made a big move up. Let's. I don't even know what the numbers are, but they will be through some sort of significance. This is the bar. And here's the price, 309.50. I told you it was significant. I, I, to, I told you. So that, that was your anticipation play through the 50, and it ripped all the way up to this line, 310.20. So you made a great trade there. And then when it went back here, under 310, under the support, you could have gotten a short right there, and it I would have got taken a profit in this bar. I would have missed this bar, this bar, this bar, this bar, and that bar. That's what I got to fix with my trading, guys. And if Bookmap can start helping me do that, where I could stay in these trades longer for more profit, that's what I want to work on. Because I know how to enter in the trades with my system based on positive expectancy. I just have to get better at uh, doing the other and staying in them longer. And that's what I do, guys. That was a nice hour. Hope you learned a bunch and saw a different kind of angle that I use in trading, you know. See, and as this 4906, as this went higher, you, NASDAQ made a nice red bar lower. And here's the red bar. It made a surely couple of beautiful red bar lower. Right now, see, it goes on to 49. Because it's like a 98% chance it's going to go on to 49 right now. 99% chance at 01. There's, it's 100%. I told you it would go under. There you go. Told you. What I tell you, right? That's a reverse high. Just, just I wouldn't have played it the other way. But I knew... At that price, uh, when it starts at 5 to 4 to 3 to 2, at 1, you're in. It's going to reverse and go under. If it goes to 95 and goes under, that's going to go to 85. It's going to drop another dime. Here's 95. Look. It's going to drop even lower. I'm out. 94 covering. Done. Good trade. See, I told you it's going to go to 85, right? It's 87. I'm done. I'm done. I got to stay in a little bit longer. That's what I need is a little bit of patience. But... Made money. That's all that counts when you make money on the trade. Look, it's at 80. I told you, right? Reverse signs. It'll bounce here at 72 to 77 and go up. You know how I know that? It's great. It's going to bounce here and go up hot back up. You know how I know that? Besides journaling. 
It's called a stopping station. If you bought at 49 where on a thousand shares, which I used to do for years, as I told you, where would you put your stop loss in, Bruce? Just as an average person, where do you think if you had to take a hypothetical guess? You bought at 49, how many cents would you risk for a stop loss? 5, 10, 15, 20, or 30 cents? Five. Five cents? Sure. On a thousand shares? How much profit are you looking for? I'm looking for it to go through the 50. No, I'm saying like on, um, look, that SOBR is rocking. It's up, going up more. So, you know, what I'm saying is on the, um, on the thousand shares. So you would risk, the average trader risks a 20 cent stop loss. I've taken polls. So if you're in on a thousand shares, the average retail trader is going to risk two hundred dollars. That's where the order. Otherwise, you get stopped out too quickly if you put it in a nickel below. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. I just so if you're, you, you're looking for your move to to work right away. Right. So if the move at forty nine doesn't work, I'm out. Everybody's bought there. All their stops are in 20 cents lower at 80, 77 to 82 range. So I wait for it to go there, and it usually stops there. They take all the stops, and they bring it right back up, which is exactly what it did. If the market is moving down tremendously fast from the 49, it'll go to 72 to 77. It'll go all the way under the 80, and it'll touch 68 before it bounces. If it's slow like it is now in the after hours from 49, it'll go 77 to 82, that nickel box, and bounce off there. I call it a stopping station. If it fails there, it'll go to 50. You don't want to ride these things down because if people that are buying at 70 and 80, their stops are at 50. And the longer it stays there without moving back up, it's going to go to the next stopping station. And they're going to keep on bringing it. That's how people blow up their accounts because they keep on adding on the way down instead of a failed stopping station. If you miss your train and it goes by your thing, dude, don't stand there for hours waiting. Just switch tracks and go to another, another station, man. Don't, you can't sit there forever. So that's how I, that's how I trade. And from recording from 49, where it stopped and where it bounced back up, I've seen a very high percentage stop in those nickel ranges of what I told you, 77 to 82. So I've built a ladder of a dollar, and I can know which way it goes up, what's going to happen at those prices, and when it comes down, what usually happens at those prices. So I like to trade before the bars make their moves, guys. It's it's a whole different game, but uh, been pretty successful doing it. Look at SOBR, dudes. $4 Heinz. Look at that. SOBR, dude. Look at this thing. Can you believe it? Look at the 50 number right here. It went through 50 like a squ everybody squeezed on 50 and then it went through four bucks so you ride this thing the whole way dudes look at that dude right through the 250 to the three dollars the biggest bar of the day started at three and then the next biggest was the huge squeeze after it works so good and now it's at 407 if it touches 411 it should go to a 19 and 20. If it touches 11, it went there, it goes 17. See? It touched 11, went right to 17. Look at him squeeze it. <laughs> See that? That's how it works, guys. Now, if it's oversold, you could, the risk rewards the other way. To reverse Heinz it, you risk a dime, but if it dumps, it's going to dump 50 cents and go back down to like 350. So you'd short here, risk a 10 cents up to the high, and if it dumps, you're going to make 30 or 40 cents. So there's a bigger favor 
for it to dump in this big size at 404. The 180 wants to get filled as a rebate. Watch. He's still sitting there at 404. See him? So you'd play in anticipation of going underneath him and then underneath four bucks. He said, see it? 377, 380. What did I tell you? Exactly. And if you didn't know that a big bid was bearish and they were going to sell in for a rebate, you would have been destroyed buying that. Am I right? That's how I work and roll, boys. Can we, can we take a look at Bookmap, uh, Mike? Yeah, absolutely. Let's see what happened in Bookmap accordingly. See, then I can congr look at the red, look at the red ball. So having that up on the other screen, as soon as that big red ball came in, you added to your short, boom, that thing went reverse Heinz under four bucks and just went to the next stopping station. So everyone that bought at 405 is getting out at 385 stopped. Everyone that bought at four is getting out at 372 to 77. You're losing your shares. They're going to bring it right back up and spit on you probably. And uh, also a lot of liquidity up filled at, uh, at $4 there as well. Yep. Look at all these sides, 28,000. Look at these numbers up here, 16,000. The SVP column is humongous. But they did it, man. Look at the biggest bars. The biggest bars are the 350s and the 4s. So here's your 350. And there's your reverse 4 and your other 4. Yeah. See, it went down right down to the next stopper which was 358, 355 range. It really works according to price. So if you start to monitor that on your own trading in conjunction with the book map, you'll, I think your trading will improve and you'll go less off charts and look at the chart to realize, could it go to that even number from where you're at? And then that move is a huge play. And is there support there or resistance there to look on the chart at that particular point? But hey, at 398, I knew it was going above four. And right here, it's probably going to stop here at 355 to 51 and uh, bounce back up because they took everyone's stops. And how does it do? It's trading 15 million shares. These are the kind of stocks you want to trade. Because even if you're wrong, probably come back around and get you out even. Even if you're wrong, because it's trading a lot of volume. But I tell you, if you buy at 90 and it goes to 80, get out. It's going to go to 50, 60. I, you know, you can't ride these things, dude. I've done it too many times and then recorded in my journal. Damn, I just blew up. Why did I buy more? Coming back down to 55, then it jumps right back up to 80. I have no shares, no account left, and I would have been probably break even because I didn't sell for a loss and reprice it. I got married to it because I looked at the chart or did whatever I thought was going to happen. Don't think anything's going to happen. Just be right, guys. And that's how I'll end it for the day. Just be right. All right. Well, thank you, Mike. Thanks, uh, guys. Excellent stuff. And uh, just uh, for people out there, just uh, uh, one more uh, disclosure on uh, yeah. uh, past performance, not necessarily indicative of future results when we're talking about different percentages, etc. This is just uh, from Mike's uh, uh, experience uh, previously trading. Absolutely. Hey, if you have a re you're recording this, right? Yes. Yeah, if I can get a copy of this recording, this will be fantastic to uh, disseminate out and use for uh, some purposes. Yeah, because, sure, sure, uh, Mike. No, no problem. Yeah, so uh, been spot on with with the calls, the moves. Look, it's back at eighty. So everything's been really nice. Thank you guys for listening to me. And if anybody has any questions, you can always send them to Bruce or send them to me. I have a Discord as well, and I would love to do some more of these with you all. Keep the education going, and and the, and uh, you know what I do because it's different from everybody else. All right. Yep. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, bud. Peace. Okay. Take care.